Ezra Levant for the Rebel Dot Media. I am standing not even half a block away from the Old Bailey, but I just wanted you to see the absolutely gorgeous St. Paul's Cathedral behind me. London is such an amazing city for architecture and history. Of course, the most important history the UK has is its history of the rule of law and liberty and so many of the gifts that we in Canada and even the United States have inherited. And that's why I find this trial of Tommy Robinson very interesting because we're in the country that ought to be the home of freedom of speech and the ability to criticize and dissent from the government. But I see that eroding here in the mother country. Uh, this morning, the trial continued with more representations by the prosecutor, Mr. Caldecott, who was hired by the attorney general to press the case against Tommy. Uh, I'm, I have to tell you, uh, I don't think it's just colored by my own sympathies for Tommy. I found his case exceedingly weak, and he proposed a number of things that if, it, if they became law, if he indeed convinced these two very sober judges to agree with him, it would be illegal to photograph anyone going into a court. In fact, not just that, to photograph anyone to quote Mr. Caldecott himself miles away from court because that could cause them distress. I found it very uh, tone deaf of Caldecott to use, that that's the prosecutor, to use the term molestation. And here's what I mean. Tommy Robinson, as he filmed these rapists going in on their verdict day, he said to them quite simply, how are you feeling about the verdict? Like that's the most neutral, almost, I'm not gonna say friendly, but it was a neutral phrasing possible. Uh, the prosecutor actually alleged uh, that by asking that, he was engaging in molestation. That's absurd on the face of it. But remember what these rapists were convicted of. A long-running rape gang targeting girls as young as 11. Imagine the prosecutor working for the Attorney General of the United Kingdom using that particular word, molestation, to describe Tommy Robinson asking a neutral question of an actual child molester. That is the Alice in Wonderland crazy time that's going on in that court. I have to say the prosecutor spent another inordinate hour on how many angels dance on the head of the pin, a bizarre in inquiry into who took a photo of a TV screen in the court where a publication ban was not. I mean, it, does it even matter? I. I felt, unless I missed uh, a dramatic moment, I felt like it was all filler. I felt like there was no there there, and that the prosecutor was simply trying to make his case seem larger and more important than it was. I, I really don't think he has a case. Now, I could be deadly wrong. Well, Caldecott, the prosecutor, is done now, and Tommy's Robert, uh, uh, lawyer, Mr. Furlong, is on his feet. And we continued until 1 p.m. here in London, at which time the judges called a lunch break. And that's where we are right now. When we resume at 2 o'clock, I think that Mr. Furlong, Tommy's lawyer, will probably take one more hour. And I understand there may even be a video played in that concluding argument, so I look forward to that. Finally, what will happen when uh, the case is done being argued? I think it's likely, given the complexity of contempt of court law, the fact that there's enormous scrutiny and controversy of this case, that these two sober-minded judges, rather than give a quick result, I think it is, this is my own speculation, I think it is likely that they will reserve their judgment, and that is, say, we'll get back to you, and they'll consider it and write out a thoughtful uh, judgment and issue that at a later day, maybe next week, maybe in a month. Frankly, there's been very little rush here. This case is 14 months old. I have to say that I'm optimistic, but I don't know how much of that is naivete and how much of that is me blinding my own self with my own partisan sympathies. But I do know this, that the lawyer for the attorney general, the prosecutor, spent an enormous amount of time saying that what Tommy Robinson does in itself, citizen journalism, is something that needs to be restricted. There was this moment when the Attorney General said, Tommy Robinson is a citizen journalist. Indeed, he wants other citizens to be journalists too, and who knows how far this will go. I'm paraphrasing. And I thought, that's awesome. That's great, but no, not, not in the eyes of the government. 
they, God forbid, democracy might break out. I think that that was actually the truest thing Mr. Caldecott said, that he wants to stamp out not just Tommy Robinson, but any other budding Tommy Robinsons who would dare to deviate from the media party. So that's my thoughts on this morning at the trial. I will go back in and uh, I'll, I'll give you a report afterwards. Uh, until then, please go to realreporters.uk to see all of our reports. And if you feel moved by our coverage and value it, please consider chipping in a few pounds or a few dollars to help us cover our travel costs. For the Rebel.media, I'm Ezra Levant. I'm here in London with three other reporters that we have crowdfunded to cover Tommy Robinson's trial. To see all our videos and to chip into our travel budget, please go to realreporters.uk.